good morning. It's Friday. Friday's a good day. Uh, tomorrow, Chris and I have a big get-together for a Tip 10 reunion. And I've just been wondering, what in the world am I going to make for that? I've got some um, beef that we got marked down at the grocery store that was for Tri-Tip, which we absolutely have fell in love with. And so I may make something with that. And then I picked up some ground beef that was marked down, so I have to brown that and put that up before it goes bad. So I've got quite a few things to do today in the cooking department. I plan on making some pie crusts and putting them in the refrigerator so I can get them out early in the morning and throw a couple of pies together because pies are the easiest dessert to make. They're faster than cookies and they're easier than making a cake. So if you don't make a lot of desserts, you can't go wrong with a pie because they're so easy. Um, anyway, with that said, I've got quite a few things on my plate today. So I got up early and I've been outside cutting flowers and I'm a little late, but that's okay. Um, we're going to talk about chapter 10, the exile. Okay. And, um, of course we're studying in our 30 days to understand the Bible book. And uh, this storyline is the exile era. And um, he just starts out telling us how um, everybody gets uh, mundane and routine and relationships deteriorate. And he starts out by telling us about a man that gets married. And in the beginning of his marriage, if his wife gets sick, he wants to take her to the hospital. Then the next time, it's the doctor. And then the next time, it's, honey, just go lay down. And then it's, you know, and then it just goes on and on. Well, after you put the kids to bed and do all your chores, then you need to lay down. You know, that kind of thing. It just kind of shows how we take each other for granted. And, um, you know, our relationships do deteriorate if we're not careful. And the same thing can happen with our relationship with God. And that's what happened to the Israelites um, is they just took things for granted and they uh, got their eyes on something else and they just continually fell into rebellion. He said it was like a roller coaster rebellion. And um, I'm sure we know people like that. And sometimes in our own lives, we've actually been that way uh, because none of us are perfect, right? So um, this storyline summary, if you want to write it down, is that Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L, gives a leadership and encourages faithfulness among the exiles for the next 70 years. So um, Daniel was the main guy. Um, he was a prophet, but he also talked about the people and uh, we got to know him a little bit more than some of the other prophets. So he is the main person in this summary um, of the exile era. Okay, so it's exile, Daniel, the place will be Babylonia. And then the summary will be Daniel gives leadership and encourages faithfulness among the exiles for the next 70 years. And then he goes on to tell us that... Um, as mentioned in chapter one, that there's prophetical books and history books, and you're going to find that in the exile era, that there was actually some prophecies made during that time. And so um, the first section that we talk about here, because there's four major sections in under prophecy, he seems to like the number four. And the first one is prophecy, and it said that the northern kingdom was conquered by Assyria. And um, we know that the southern kingdom was kind of spared for a little while compared to the northern because they did have a few pretty good kings. So finally, God uh, decides that he's going to put them into captivity as well. But it says that they had a warning from Jeremiah. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. Okay. And it says, he prophesies that the nation will be taken into captivity at the hands of the Babylonians. And it says this happens to the people in 586 B.C. He also accurately prophesies that the captivity will last 70 years. So um, he was a good, pro you know, he was a prophet and what he said came true. Okay, 
So the number two is number two uh, subject in the exile era is prophets. So the first one is prophecy. The second one is prophets. And with prophets, it says um, the first one, the main point, if you want to write it down under prophecy, was warning of impending captivity from Jeremiah. Okay. Now the number two is prophets, and they. It says, encouraging faithfulness of the exiles. So they were there to help encourage the exiles, the ones that had take, been take, taken into captivity. They were there trying to encourage them. Um, and that is Ezekiel and Daniel. Okay. Now it says that not a great deal is known about Ezekiel because he mostly wrote prophetical um, book and he didn't really talk about an autobiography that much but it says that he foretells of a nation restoration and encourages faithfulness among the exiles and then we go into Daniel's book and it says that it is full of prophecy but it's also biographical um, it says that he is a prominent governmental leader much like Joseph was in Egypt so Daniel's a little different because he was actually a government leader and he was a prophet as well um, his personal life is an example to his people. His prophecies tend to concern future destruction of the world. Okay, that's Daniel. Now, the number three main point is called exiles. And the little uh, description is assimilated into the culture. A-S-S-I-M-I-L-A-T-E-D. Assimilated into the culture. And what that means is they blended in. Okay, it says that the book of Daniel gives us a glimpse among the exiles. Apparently the Jews were assimilated into the culture in which they were exiled. They experienced discrimination, which has also been true, of displaced Jews. Yet in spite of this, they seem fairly well integrated into their society, and some of them have achieved positions of prominence. So even if some of the Jews were in exile, some of them actually uh, did well during the time. Now, number four under the exile era is a power change. And its main description is that the Persian Empire expands. And this is under the prophet Daniel. Now, the Jews were in exile in Babylonia. And then Persia rises to be the dominant power. And um, by the time it was over, Persia had conquered Babylonia. Ba Babylonia had conquered Assyria. So now Persia, Persia ruled Assyria, Babylonia as well. And it said that they their uh, empire expanded from the Tigris and Euphrates River, and we remember where they were on the geography map, all the way over to the Mediterranean Sea. So they, they ruled a lot of area. Okay, and that is the exile era in a nutshell. So you've got prophecy, prophets, exiles, and power change. So um, under the summary, it says Daniel gives, I think it's prophecy, but I'll look again because I don't have it remembered by heart. Daniel gives leadership, if you want to fill in the blank, the blank is leadership, and encourages faithfulness is one of the blanks. Among the exiles is one of the blanks for the next 70 years. So Daniel encouraged them, okay? And we all need encouraging sometimes when we're not even in exile. So I can't imagine being in the position these people were in because so many of us Americans get depressed when there's so many things for us to be thankful for. And Really, we're not in exile. Now, some of us may feel like we're in um, enslaved to our physical conditions, and some of us are. Uh, but most of the time, even if we are, we still have our mind, which is good. It's really sad when we, we don't have our mind or our physical. And um, then I could actually see, you know, uh, anyway, it's bad, like where mama is where the people are Alzheimer's or dementia patients. And um, 
I know that they get depressed. But let's try, no matter where we are in this life, and no matter what we're doing, let's try our best to be encouraged, just like Daniel tried to encourage the Jews. Uh, because there are so many things that we could be thankful for in this life, okay? The number one is the fact that when this life is over, we have Jesus Christ that has prepared a home for us in heaven if we believe that he's the son of God and believe what God tells us in the Bible. Um, and that alone is enough to shout about, right? Um, it really is. Most of us, because we can't see it, and it's not right here next to us, we take it for granted, just like they talk about in the first of this book. We take God for granted. We take Christ for granted. We take the Bible for granted. We take the ability to be able to worship freely for granted. And um, we really need to be thankful for all of these things and be thankful for what we have and not feel like we won't, won't, won't. You know what? When I was young, I'll talk a minute this morning because Chris is still in the bed. But when I was young, my major, my, one of my major things that was hard on me, uh, because Chris was a football coach and a teacher, and I didn't work that much when we were young, and we didn't make a lot of money, okay? And I would get wish books, magazines in the mail. Now, this is one that I'm sure a lot of y'all get. It's called, and this is backwards, but it's called Collections, Etc., Okay, and you flip through here and you see so many beautiful things. Now, this book is set up for women, and I mean, they color coat everything, and like the fall, look how beautiful this wreath is, and they've even got this hanging owl that's realistic and real. I mean, they got so many cute things. They've got the... This is where I get my dishwasher magnets that some of y'all have asked about. And they have one in here that I just want so bad, and I'll probably get it. Uh, that's the fun thing about having my CVC, my Color Valley Cooks, is because I make a little extra money to get a few things that is fun, you know. But look at this dishwasher magnet, how cute it is. So, I mean, what, this is one of my problems when I was young. I would get these books in the mail, and I would want, 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 want. And then I couldn't have it, you know. Um, so we have to be careful, don't we? Um, I mean, if you have the money to get something, get something. But if you don't, then don't, you know, spend money that you don't, don't spend money that you need to be using for something else. Um, because all in all, if we just use some soap and water in the house, it's amazing how beautiful everything can look. Uh, there's such a difference in things being clean and looking pretty than things being dirty. And so I, I remember for years I wanted uh, new countertops because I was young. I mean, there's so many people that go out and get new houses just so they can have a granite countertop or they call somebody in to put it in. And I know a lot of y'all have that. I just have the old fashioned um, plastic laminate countertops. And so there was a period of time when I wanted plastic, I, I wanted to get rid of it. And now I could care less. I mean, I'm being honest. I don't even care. But when you're young, all these little things pop in your head and you won't, won't, won't. And um, I'm just trying to say that um, I didn't need it. There's a big difference in our needs and our wants. And we need to be thankful for what we have. And I can remember thinking like, um, and the young people are, I think, the worst. And I think that most older women actually kind of grow out of it. But there are some that don't. I mean, there's women out there in their 60s that are still working and buying a brand new house that they're going to owe a lot of money on because they still haven't got what this life is really about, okay? The older we get, the kind of wiser we get about it. Um, but anyway, I know I'm preaching this morning, but I got to thinking when I wanted those countertops about missionaries and how they live and other people in the world and how they live and how they don't have, they have dirt floors and they have, um, you know, wood countertops and how blessed it is to be where we are and be able to, you know how nice it is to crawl up in a warm bed under clean sheets 
and be able to take a bath whenever we want to. I mean, there's so many people that can't do that. And so we should really, really look. We, we should pay attention and slow down and make, make look at the things that we have and be proud of the things we have and clean the things that we have and dust the pretty things that we do have so that we're thankful. Um, and that sounds goofy, but if you hire somebody to come and clean your house, because uh, I was there at one time, I, ha I had somebody hired to clean my house at one time. And whenever that happened, I never slowed down enough to look at what I had, and I wasn't near as thankful. Um, so let's just be thankful. Let's pick up God's Word today, and let's read a little bit out of it, okay? And let's praise Him for all He has done for us, for letting us live here, and for us to have the blessings in this life that we do have. Um, and we should focus on others more than we focus on ourselves. With that said, um, Cindy... Uh, the girl out of Douglasville that has the cancer will be having her surgery on the 27th. Y'all keep her in your prayers. I've got a cousin's wife named Pam. He's my first cousin. She's had a melanoma taken out of her back, and it was in two lymph nodes. She had her PET scan yesterday, and it was clear, praise the Lord. But let's pray that she chooses the right doctors to get the correct treatment so that melanoma don't come back and bite her in the tail. And you know what I mean? That melanoma can be really bad. Um, so y'all keep those two ladies in your prayers. There was also a lady at church when I went to um, homecoming at Eddie's church name. Her name was, uh, I don't remember her first name, but her last name was Abney. And she has triple negative breast cancer, and she's just finished up her treatments. And so y'all pray for her um, as well. She sang and was a beautiful singer. And I mean, she just belted it out, too. It was great. Um, so let's just keep all these people in our prayers because so many of us have just gotten bad news or bad news about a family member and we need prayer. Okay. Um, let's just say our prayers this morning. That praise the Lord. We can go to him. Uh, if Jesus hadn't have died on that cross and the veil hadn't have been split wide open, we wouldn't be able to have an intercessor for prayer. Um, like we do now. So we're real privileged in Christ. Uh, name we are going to pray, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you so much um, for today, this Friday. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for our clean sheets and our beds and our kitchen and everything that we have. We pray that you would help us be better stewards of our money and our time. Help us to think about others. I pray that you would help each and every one of us today go outside, look up in the sky, and see your creation. Uh, so many of the things in our homes are man-made, and that's all we look at. So I pray that we, all, each and every one that watches this show today takes a minute out of their day to go outside and listen to the birds, look at the clouds, look at the trees, and maybe pick a flower if they have some in the yard. Um, so that we can see your natural beauty that you have given us. Um, just be with us as we go throughout this day. Uh, keep us throughout the weekend before we have another Bible study. Thank you for all these people who tune in and care enough about you that they would take the time out of their day and uh, listen to what you say through your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. That was a long prayer. But I'm in the mood this morning. I've been outside and it just makes you love him even more when you go outside and you see what he does for us. Even the little things, y'all, he does so much for us. I mean, think about it. I think sometimes of the flowers that he gives us to look at. They're unbelievable. And even my pets. I mean, that sounds crazy, but praise the Lord, God made dogs and cats and um, little things that we can uh, grow close to and give us encouragement in our heart and make us laugh. There's so many joys in this world that nobody ever talks about uh, because all they ever think about are the things that aren't a joy. And we should write down over the weekend some of the joys. Share it on my Color Valley Cooks group page. I don't mind. Um, that's the only page I have where y'all can actually share something um, or share your testimony, one of you. That would be great. I would love it if, if I got some testimonies that I could read. Um, it would be wonderful. Y'all have a great 
great weekend and you'll probably see me in the kitchen today and tomorrow making for my family reunion probably more today because in the morning i'll be in such a tizzy hurry that i don't know that i'll turn on the camera but uh, we'll see y'all have a wonderful day and i love you bye